Okay, thank you. And hello, everybody. Wow, it has been such a blessing and inspiration to hear the presentations of pastors Bruno and John Kevin Lee. And thank God for his wonderful work in their lives and in their ministries. In this forum, we are seeking to understand the generations called Millennial and Z in order to engage in campus evangelism and discipleship that is relevant and effective. Understanding is one aspect of love. Our goal is to love the people in these generations well. Without understanding, it is hard to love well. So we must understand. And this requires intentional effort on our part. For indeed, the generational shifts that have taken place, fueled by postmodern thought, and the rise of the internet have been quite significant. In seeking to understand, in North America UBF, we have done many things, including inviting scholars who specialize in this topic to speak at our staff conferences. Some of them include Dr. Camille Bishop, author of We're in This Boat Together, and Dr. Jolene Erlacher, author of Millennials in Ministry, and the Daniel Generation, Godly Leadership in an Ungodly Culture. Their works have been very helpful to us. Moreover, we have discussed this topic in our senior staff meetings, various leaders meetings, countless informal fellowship groups. And then again, many of us have children who belong to the Millennial or Z Generation. Among my six children, three are millennials, one is borderline, and two are part of Gen Z. So over the years, in various ways, we have learned many things. And in prayerfully considering this topic, I have a few thoughts to share that I believe will be of practical help. Most of all, we should see all the generations from God's point of view. When we compare generations, we tend to evaluate them in a way that promotes one or the other as better. But from God's point of view, there is no one righteous, not even one. Jesus referred to his generation as wicked and adulterous. And the same is true of each generation. So we need to resist the temptation to promote our own generation. Rather, we should acknowledge our sins and our faults. As a member of the baby boomer generation, I must admit to millennials and Gen Z that my generation was wrong in some specific ways. For one thing, the older generations have not been good stewards of our planet. One of my Bible students is a young father and a millennial. In a recent conversation, he spoke for 30 minutes about the serious problem of plastics in our oceans and water systems. He became aware of this as he had to change his baby's plastic diapers. Plastic diapers were developed in the boomer generation to make parents' lives easier and more convenient. My wife and I changed many plastic diapers without thinking even once we were harming the water supply. We have learned from MZs to be more considerate of our environment. And this is actually in line with God's truth. For in Genesis, we see that God put humankind in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. When we share this with MZs and put the issue in a biblical context, they feel vindicated. And they also begin to open their eyes to the God of the Bible. Another issue we have is the tendency to insist on a hierarchical leadership structure and organization. Without getting into this matter in detail, boomers often expect obedience and conformity from MZs as a beginning point to having a relationship. But honestly speaking, MZs do not trust boomers 
or the organizations they have created because they believe power is applied to take advantage of them. They don't want to work for bosses in the older generation. They would rather start their own company with their friends. In addressing this issue, we boomers must admit that we do have a fallen nature that seeks power over others to advance our own self-interests. Jesus called this out in his disciples as something to be repented of and corrected. And he said, for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. When we are willing to repent and become like Jesus, it opens the door to a real relationship with MZs. And most of all, we can point them to Jesus. And when they come to know Jesus, their lives really change. Then there is the issue of emphasizing individual performance rather than working together as a team. Boomers often promote an environment of competition to enhance individual performance. But MZs understand that working together as a team yields better results. An old African proverb says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And indeed the picture of the Christian church in the New Testament is a body of believers united in Christ, each endowed with the Holy Spirit and gifts to build up the church of Christ together and to advance God's kingdom together in the world. When we acknowledge the limits of individualism and affirm the wisdom of working together as a team, MZs feel validated and we can point them to the work of the Holy Spirit in the church. Thus far, I have focused on how boomers can repent of our own sins and point MZs to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But there is another issue, one that requires boomers to stand on the Bible truth without compromise. It is the downward spiral towards sexual immorality and gender confusion. The older generation needs to speak the truth in love on this issue, appealing to both the teachings of scripture and to the truth of nature. There are some good short books on this by Pastor Kevin DeYoung. I have found very helpful, helpful two of them. What does the Bible really say about homosexuality and men and women in the church? We have thought a lot about understanding millennials and Gen Z. Understanding is so important, but it is just the beginning. We need to go further. We need to go to God together. And to do this, I highly recommend an honest, engaging study of Genesis in which boomers and MZs Listen to the word of God together. Discover God's truth together. Repent together. And grow together in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and trust that these comments have been helpful and may hopefully stimulate our discussion on this topic. Thank you for your time and attention.